Okay, let's, let's begin, guys. So, just mention quickly, sent through some um, holiday homework on chapter six. So, hopefully, you've just had a look at it. That's just a bit of a recap of some statistical concepts we've seen before, and then um, introducing you to the idea of standard deviation and variance. So, that means we can get straight into chapter seven, and um, we'll have a look at our notes here. We'll have a bit of a read through, and then we've just got a little bit of a discussion and some examples to go through. So today, um, when we're talking about statistics, right, there are two types of data. There's numerical, which means numbers, right, and categorical, which means categories. So, you know, you can, you can survey people, you can say how tall are you, it's going to be a number. You can say, survey people, what's your favourite colour, find out how many people like blue, how many people like green, that's a category, right? And then within numerical, there are two types of data. There is discrete Okay, that means discrete, like it's whole integer values. These are things you count. And then there is continuous. And these are things that you measure. Um, so there's, a, there's an important distinction to be made between those two. Here they're whole integer values, all right? And then here these are things that you measure. Um, because when, whenever you measure, like let's say pencils, all right? Um, no two pencils are ever the same length, okay? If you keep zooming in, you will find minuscule differences between them, all right? And so you know, you guys know this, right? You can have um, meters, you can have millimeters, you can have micrometers, nanometers, you can keep going down with finer and finer gradations. You can keep dividing that interval up into smaller and smaller parts, and so you can observe differences, all right? No two things are ever the same length, the same weight, the same. There's always minuscule differences between them. Um, okay, so discrete things you count, continuous things you measure. And we are looking at, in chapter seven, discrete random variables. So we're gonna be considering whole integer values. Our first exercise in 7a today is about the distinction between the two. Okay, so we're gonna say this distinction between the two, and then for the rest of chapter seven, we're gonna look at um, discrete values, and then when we get to chapter 8 and 9, that's going to be things that we measure. Okay, so um, let's have a read through. Um, so look, your start us off there, you've got a book there. Can you have a read of the first few sentences there? A random variable uses numbers to describe the possible outcomes which could result from a random experiment. Random variables are either discrete or continuous, but discrete random variables takes on whole integer values, there are things that you can count. Now, how many goals are scored in a game of soccer at number of cows in the field? Oh, very good. So they're examples of discrete and then, sorry, keep going, <coughs> continuous. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Continuous random variables exist on multiple, uh, these are things you can measure. How tall are you because uh, time taken to run 100 meters? Very good. Okay, so let's just have a chat going through these examples here um, and we'll try and figure out whether something is discrete or continuous. So the question is, am I measuring or am I counting? All right, so we have the number of players on a soccer team. Fergus? Discrete. Very good. So write discrete there. All right. We've got the distance from school to a student's house. Sam. Continuous, it's very good because you're measuring how far is it. Uh, the number of pencils in a pencil case, Julio? Discrete. Discrete, very good. I've had people in the art class say, sometimes you have half a pencil. Yeah, I'm not asking you, um, you know, how many half pencils, I'm saying how many pencils are there? Whether it's a half pencil or a pencil, it's a pencil, okay? So, um, yep, it's discrete, it's something you count. Number of cars in the car park, Josh? Discrete. Discrete, very good. Um, time taken to drive home from school, hey? Oh, continuous. Very good, you're gonna measure how long it takes. The width of the TV, crunchy. Continuous. And the amount of pages in a book, Vinny. I was just thinking about that one. Discrete. Discrete, discrete. discrete yeah, because it's amount, number of, very good. Um, if you were measuring how thick the book is, you know that's when it would be sort of continuous. All right. Um, here we go. We've got a dice is rolled to produce a variable x. Okay, so we use capital x to represent the random variable. 
explain why x is a discrete random variable. Okay, so when a dice is rolled, if x is a, x is a dice, and when a dice is rolled, what are the possible outcomes we could get? We could get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. So why is this a discrete random variable? Because the possible, the possible um, values that can occur are discrete values, right? It's not like you can get a number between 1 and 2. You can't get a number between 2 and 3. So to write that, this is discrete because All possible outcomes are integer values. Very good. Uh, state the possible values of x. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Alright, next we've got uh, the length of a student's hair is measured. Alright, is x a discrete variable or a continuous variable? So that's going to, so this is on question three now. The answer to A is going to be continuous. State a possible, state possible values of x. So who's got the longest hair here? Lauren, yours is pretty long. How long is it here? Zoe, yours is pretty long, 50 centimetres. Lydia? Um, so let's say something like this, between zero, Mr. Royals with the shortest, and Zoe with the longest. <laughs> Alright, and what do we notice about the difference between, here we had discrete, okay, whole integer values, here we had continuous, over an interval, okay, so that's the key difference between them. Excellent, that's, that's my notes. So let's have a start on exercise 7a.